tired. She's hanging her head limply on her desk, looking exhausted. I'll use the opportunity to re reconcile what she's doing a bit without getting roped into the new student council thing again, though I suspect that door is now closed for me. Uh, festival preparations must be tough, you know. Indeed, the people in this school seem to be taking the festival very seriously. Whenever I see people idling around before and after classes, they're usually talking about their plans for it. It's kind of neat to see everyone so enthusiastic about it, though. I'm probably the only one who doesn't have something to do. Or someone to do, am I right? Am I right? Fist bump. Susan scoffs at me first, as if trying to decide whether to ignore or sneer at me. But in the end, she starts signing without doing either. Misha perks up, looking at her hands with slightly unfocused eyes. Dot. She signs with harsh, heavy, dramatic strokes. Misha translates her signing into speech for me. She does it so well, it's almost like Shizun's actually speaking, transmitting her thoughts directly through Misha, like a psychic, like a cult leader. She must have practiced it vigorously. We should... Why don't people use that word more often in vocabulary? Like, start saying that. Hashtag vigorously. Minus the hashtag, because hashtags are dumb. But let's start... Let's start saying that. Vigorously. Vigorously. Well, of course we're in the student council, you know, so we're pretty busy. Dot. It's an important duty of ours to ensure the success, success, success of the festival with our, all our strength. Dot. We would shame ourselves in front of the past student council generations if the festival were to fail. Dot. That's why there must be no flaws, no, uh, I think that was encumbrances? No nothing that might make the festival short of perfect. Shizun's passionate speech and Misha's enacting are really oddly fitting of them. Oh, hello! Oh, yay! I look over my shoulder and see Hanako peering timidly into the classroom, most of her body hidden behind the door. Hey! Playing delinquent again! <laughs> Hanako blushes hard at Misha's straightforward jab, even if it was only in jest. Dot. Whoop! No, come back! She's in stares at her book to look down and start backing away to the point where only her fingers can be seen wrapped around the edge of the door. Maybe she's showing her dislike of Hanako by association of her dislike of Lily. What a bitch. It appears so, and Hanako probably knows it as well. Oh, uh, what is it, Hanako? <laughs> Has Lily been here? Sorry, haven't seen Satao. She, uh, came by in the morning, though. Hanako keeps looking uneasily at Shizun, who stares back at her with her unusually studying gaze. What is she trying to do? Of course, she isn't going to look away, and she's intimidating enough as it is, so I can only imagine how terrified Hanako would be. It's a little uncomfortable watching Hanako's reaction to Shizun's normal behavior. This is what happens when two people of two different extremes meet, it seems. Do, do you know where she is? Dot. If she has any sense in her head, she's in her classroom, working on their festival project. But who knows where that woman is loitering at? Oh, goodbye, Hanako. Hanako nods quickly and retreats with haste. What are we talking about? Oh, yeah. We're working really hard to make the festival happen. <laughs> and driving other people insane along the way, am I right? Am I right? Well, well, good luck with that. I stand up to leave, making my exit before either of them manages to berate me anymore for slacking off. The halls are somewhat quiet as expected. Everyone must be in club means or at festival preparations. Or both. Shizun's words are about Shizun's words about being a slacker echo in my head. I feel a little bit guilty about not contributing, but I seem to lack the resolve to do anything concrete about the manner. For the festival it's too late already, unless I count helping Shizun and Misha, which I naturally don't. In clubs I don't know. Maybe I'm not a club type of person. 
Halfway through the way from the school building to the dorms, I spot a figure in front of the dorms. It's Rin. Yes! It looks like she's working on her mural today, too. I walk over to her, but she doesn't seem to notice me approaching. She's sitting on an upturned box, looking intently at the wall she's painting with a brush held between her toes. That's just... I like the, the far left, the far right guy. It reminds me of, um... Creepers in House Moving Castle. Are those nipples? Those are nip-nips. The mural has progressed considerably... Con wow! Considerably. Since yesterday, but it's still only half done as far as I can tell. More colors have appeared, and the twisted human-like figures have spread and increased in number. I have to say, the style is quite eye-catching and very unique. Not that I would be knowledgeable about art on any measurable scale, but... It's very nice looking, nevertheless. I clear my throat to get her attention. <coughs> but not startle her so that her concentration won't break. Wait. She doesn't even turn to check who it is. I'll wait. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Fifteen minutes later, I decide that her concentration is indeed unbroken, and also that I've waited too long to warrant poking her gently on the shoulder to remind her of my presence. Rin turns her head mechanically to my direction, ending up staring at my crotch level. Oh. It's a sio. She can tell? I would feel a lot less uncomfortable if she would look at my face. Nope, penis. Oh, an astute observation. Hard at work, I see conversation starts as if I hadn't been here for a quarter of an hour already, but it's not a concern. At least it starts. Looking good. It does. The layers of paint, hiding the other layers of paint, mixing and shaping the human figures really create an impressive look. But Rin looks miffed. You shouldn't comment on works in progress. Seven years of bad luck, you know. Oh, that sounds terrible. Oh, I guess I'll take it back. Still, it looks good. I wonder if I get 14 years of bad luck for thinking that. Rin turns back to look at her painting and pokes it with a big toe. Could you make some of this color? I'm running out of it. She looks down at a half-empty bowl with the remains of the same pinkish paint in it. I didn't really intend to stay and help her with this project, though. I guess I didn't intend to do much anything. I look at Rin. She looks emptily back at me. Uh, just this once, because I'm a nice guy. Rin picks up another brush and drenches it in another tone of pale red. There are dozens of similar bowls all around here working area. From the looks of the scene, she could have been sitting there for hours. I wonder if she has. That would mean she would have been skipping school, though, which, of course, wouldn't put beyond someone like Rin. I pour a little bit of white and red into the bowl, trying to match the color with the one already on the wall. I, I can't seem to get it right, because I'm a sio and I suck. It's really inconvenient of her to not mix enough in the first place. Getting it to be exactly the same tone will be impossible. But at least I can try to get close as I can. Uh, speaking of hard work... Like... Penis. Yeah. Isn't that a huge workload for you, too? It's such a big painting. Oh. I'm not old and bitter enough to yet to think that. Oh, I guess you aren't. You guessed right. Legs hurt, though. They feel like slugs. Slugs made of slee slugs. Oh, uh, because of position? Yeah. I like doing it in a horizontal position more, if you know what I'm talking about. But it can't be helped. Can't ask the wall to lay down. Saying that, she stretches herself a little, bending her legs back far more than a human should flex. It's astonishing how effortlessly she manages her body around. There's a small flinch in her otherwise blank expression. A hint of pain, maybe? As she stretches out her calves. Rin must have stamina and dexterity far above a normal person to be able to live like she does. But she's wearing out working on this. Why push yourself? Take a break or something. Continue tomorrow if it's bad. This gives her a pause. A long one, too. Feeling like a mental yawn. I don't think host. I don't think so, Hasayo. I'm not pushing myself. It sure looks like you are. No, it's not about pushing or pulling or anything related to that kind of thing. There is this boy. A boy? Yes. Where? At the art club. Er, uh, and? 
He is blind. Oh, how can you paint if you're blind? No idea. So why is he there? That's the point. He is there. She really should speak more than one word at a time to make this feel more like a discussion, less like an interrogation. He can't really do anything that you'd call art, right? But he comes there anyway and he paints. Why? Uh, I don't know. Why? I don't know. That's why I asked. Uh, so? He doesn't paint often, but I think his paintings are very interesting. Oh, uh, I'm sure they are. I once tried that, painting with eyes closed. Wasn't too interesting, and cleaning up the floor took ages. Didn't try again. But he is becoming better at sculpting. Oh, uh, I see. Maybe she was trying to make a point with this. Maybe she forgot she had one. Uh, it seems like the art club is full of pretty cool cats. Not really. Pretty blunt statement, and she totally missed the sarcasm. No? Just like I said, they're not very interesting. I usually don't have much interest in people who are not interesting. Maybe you have. Maybe. Dot dot dot. But that boy is interesting. Maybe I'm like that boy, or maybe you are. Maybe everyone is. Doing things you can't do just because you can. That's pretty deep, I think. And tell that to her. You're a deep one. That... I... Phrasing. I... Oh, thoughts. Nah, I'm really shallow and thoughtless person. People say that to me all the time. Did you know I can only think of four things at the same time? Uh, no, but now I do. Right now, I'm thinking of the second floor's girl's toilet. Ice cream flavored ice cream, the middle toe, and a haircut. I'm gonna need a haircut. She shakes her head around vigorously, laying her short, messy hair ruffle wildly around. I can see that doing it is something she likes to do. She's so cute! She's so cute! We fall silent as Rin treads around absentmindedly, poking some brushes around. The thoughts about the art club sticks in my head for a while longer. I feel like I'm trying on very unknown territory with art. The way these meetings with Rin go, it's as though I'm starting a smoking habit or something. I should probably stop talking with her. It's not like I dislike her, despite the confusion her being herself causes, and I don't dislike art either. I've even drawn for fun sometimes. I just don't have a real creative drive or any technical skill. So usually if I were to draw something, I get white paper syndrome and just freeze completely. That, or I manage to draw something disfigured and promptly get frustrated at my inability to put the picture in my head down the paper, and then call it quits without really even trying to make an effort. Ring clearly doesn't have this problem, but she frustrates me in another way. Being with her is like looking in a mirror that doesn't reflect anything. It makes one question the sanity of the act. Rin sits down in her box, swaying from side to side, apparently comfortable with the uncomfortable silence. She's staring at me again, or maybe over my shoulder. I can't quite figure out where her eyes are focused. I'm thinking of leaving so she can carry on working, undistracted, and that I can do whatever I'm going to do alone. It's not like I have anything that must be done today. Oh, shoot. Look at the time. Who? Uh, nobody. I just... I forgot to tell Nako that Lily was looking for her. Do you know her from my class? Oh, her. The mystery toilet girl. That person's funny. I saw her going to the toilet five times during one recess three weeks ago. I'm sure it's the world record. It was very mysterious. Well, uh, is that why you call her the mystery toilet girl? I don't know, Hisayo. Why do you think... Oh my gosh. What other reason could there possibly be? Well, if there is, it's an internal mystery. I didn't follow her in there. Dot, dot, dot. Maybe it was the week before that? It could have been. Dot, dot, dot. Looking at her makes me hungry. Don't say that. At least not around her. Rin turns to look at me blankly as if she's not sure why I reproved her. But she doesn't acknowledge understanding any more than before, so I give up at this point. Uh, you wanna go eat some dinner? No, not yet. Rin has turned her hungry gaze back at the wall, looking slightly more energetic, or at least slightly less lethargic than she did before. It's as if the wall is an opponent she has to vanquish. 
Something she must overcome before she can indulge in dinner. Din din, as I like to call it. This is the feeling I get. A weird sense of empathy overcomes me and makes me smile a little bit to myself. For all her oddity, Rin's pretty cool. Oh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna skedaddle. Have fun. Rin has already grasped a brush and is dipping it into fresh paint, so of course she can't hear me anymore or doesn't answer anything, even if she does. Adhering to the nurse's nagging voice in the back of my head, I set my alarm clock to wake me up early enough to go jogging again. I made a promise, and I'm going to keep it. Besides, Emmy's bound to rat on me if I don't show up. It's not all that bad. Cyclops closing his eye. Heck yeah! Transition! Transitioning! We're transitioning! Clock wipe! Good morning, sunshine!